Vickers, let's take a look at a, something a little higher security than those Vietnamese locks we've been messing with the last uh, week or so. This is a Brinks 50 millimeter high security. In fact, I have the package here. They call it a Max Security weatherproof lock. I don't know what Max Security is, but on the back they give us a little more information. Uh, they tell us first of all it's by pins and they're pick resistant, so I'm hoping they're security pins. Uh, it's a boron steel shackle, 11,000 pounds cut resistance, so we're not going to cut through that with a pocket knife. And we can't pull it out either because it's got 17,000 pounds of pry resistance. So externally this appears to be a pretty good 50 millimeter lock. Um, looking at the lock itself, um, uh, externally it has the boron steel shackle, as I said, and the weatherproofing, interestingly, uh, is a perfect gasket along the top to keep out all of the weather. Uh, even though the gasket is soft rubber, we might be able to, you might be able to think we could go ahead, uh, you can see I can stick that pick through there, through that gasket, and shim it. But of course, this one has ball bearings, so we'd be wasting our time and cutting our gasket, as you see. This is soft rubber, and uh, it's got a band around the top and bottom, so as it bangs against our, you know, our bicycle or our, our toolbox or door, it doesn't leave any scars, and I think that's probably a good idea. The yellow body is hard plastic, so very durable. It's hard, you can't really leave a mark in it, and I think that does, probably will do a good weather of keeping a good job of keeping the weather out. It also covers up those ugly laminated discs because underneath here, that's really all there is. Uh, on the bottom, this is kind of cool as well. It has a little door that you can close to keep out, you know, snakes and rhinoceros, things like that. Can't get in there. Uh, it is an M1 keyway, and the key is. Uh, bitted quite a uh, challenge. There we go. You can see it's a lot of high low high lows on there, so it should be a little bit of fun. Um, it does work. Like I said, it's brand new. There we go. And it's a little hard to get back, but there we go. So we're locked up. So let's see if we can't pick it back open. See if it. See if we can get this thing to give us a couple of its secrets. Now I've been asked to uh, be a little more descriptive, so there's some people out there who would like to uh, be able to do this on uh, by themselves. So maybe if I'm a little more descriptive, um, you'll figure out what I'm doing and why. Uh, what I do is I, after I put my tension in, without putting any tension, I'll take my pick and shove it all the way to the rear, and then I'll apply a little bit of tension. Now at this point, you got a choice. If you're a patient person like Dr. Bent, a very calm, serene picker, you go pin by pin, and you'll find that binding pin and you'll get your fault set. Well, you know, I'm wired a little different. I'm an impatient kind of guy, and uh, that's not all the time good, believe me, but in this case, let's just give it a shot. I'll apply a little tension, and rather than go pin by pin, I'm gonna rock it. And there we go, I got a fault set. Now, that doesn't always work, but it works often enough to give me hope. So you can see that normally it's oriented uh, like this, and now we've got just a little bit of fault set. Now, what I consider the fun part can begin. What I'm going to do now is put my pick back in, all the way to the rear, and I'm near pin, I, I come forward and I'm feeling for that last pin, it's pin number five. And I'm going to center my pick directly on the tip of it as best I can, and then I'm going to put a little upward pressure. And what I'm trying to do is sense something on this finger. Let me center that, I'm, I apologize. I'm trying to sense any kind of feedback pushing against my fingertip. Now, for those of you who have not been picking long, the tendency is to get all scrunched up here. You might even put your finger way up here and just try to get all you know, tight. If you do that, you're actually cheating yourself out of some of the feel because the longer, the further you can put your finger up that tension wrench, the more chance it will have to amplify whatever is happening inside of that core. So try to remember, keep your finger up there and keep it flat to expose the largest surface area of your finger. All of the nerves are located right there in the tip and that's gonna you'll make it easier for you to detect all of that feedback. If you, you, know, you, you get into a habit of just putting the tip of your finger in there, you're depriving yourself of some of that surface area. So try to keep it full length and don't press too hard. If you see white, if you push so hard you start to see white in your fingertip, probably too much pressure. All right, let's get back to picking this sucker. All right, I'm on pin five, I push up, I feel nothing. I'm gonna move forward to pin four, I push up, and I feel nothing. I move up to pin three, push up, nothing, and so forth. Let me find what we get. There we go, we're on pin two. Now, notice on pin two, when I give a little upward pressure, 
it's actually pushing that wrench, giving me some counter rotation. And that's because his security pin is stuck in the plug. And I want to help him go home. I, I want him to go home. Because the sooner he goes home, the quicker we can get on with this. So what I'll do is I'll put a little upward pressure on him with my pick. And I'll hold the pick steady. I won't continue to apply more pressure. And I'll release pre te uh, the tension wrench a little bit until he goes home. Even though I had just a little bit of pressure there, as soon as he went home, whatever little pressure I had got me back to my fault set and then some more. So that's how that works. And then once I got one set, it doesn't matter where he is in the stack, even if it was pin four, I'll go all the way to the rear. And that way I know I don't ever miss anything. It's your choice. You can start in the front rear. It really doesn't matter. And moving forward, I'm still looking for another, another person, another pin to set. And I feel nothing. So I'll try it again, see what we can get going. I actually hope I feel nothing, and that way I can show you another little trick. All right, this worked out perfect, almost like I planned it. I feel nothing. If that happens, uh, it might mean that um, you have not completely set whatever pin you, you tried to set last. So what you can do, you can put your pick all the way in, release with your tension, and you can kind of jiggle it, just jiggle. And what I'm hoping for is that if we improperly set a pin, we didn't push him all the way home, or we pushed him into the overset condition, by jiggling, It'll loosen him up, and he'll pop out and give us another crack. So let's see if that happened. See if I can find the loose guy now. Okay, it is. It's pin three, and that's exactly what happened. So I'll put a pressure on him, release tension, and there he went. We got him that time. We did it right. Go all the way to the back of the stack, and I'm going to start looking for the next victim. Hmm. We come on pin five now. A little pressure. And the same thing happened. I probably didn't completely send him home. I'm gonna do a little jiggling and hope for the best. Now, the reason I'm showing you this, sometimes this can save you time. It's to keep you from having to restart all over again. And then I got it back. Again I was lucky. It doesn't work every time, but it, again it works often enough to give me hope. So I'm back on pin five. Let's try him again. And that time I think he went. And there we go. We got to open. So by just employing that little jiggle, this lock was completely picked. And I screwed up pin number five. And we tried the little jiggling. And we worked him back out. And I got another crack at him. And I saved probably five minutes or so. So anyway, it's, it's a good little technique. Put it in your black bag. Uh, pull it out when you need it. Anyway, uh, thank you for your time. Everybody stay safe and uh, stay legal.